In today's video, we're going to talk about transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water by evaporation from aerial parts of a plant. Aerial parts of the plant include the leaves. This is typically because they're found high up up the plant as opposed to below the plant, because typically aerial means higher. So here, I'm going to do the xylem going into the structure of a leaf. This layer here of the leaves, these are your palisade mesophyll cells. Just above that we have the upper epidermis and here we have spongy mesophyll cells. So these cells here, these are not as organised and as neatly laid out as the other cells have drawn so far. And because of that, you get a very large air pockets and air gaps and air sacs building up in between the cells. Now I'm going to demonstrate how water leaves the xylem to the leaves to the outside air by osmosis. So what happens is, by osmosis, water leaves from the xylem into these cells. When it reaches these cells, it evaporates into water vapour. If you remember, the spongy mesophyll has large air gaps in between the cells. This helps the water vapour diffuse out of the leaf. Water vapour now builds up in these air sacs. Water vapour now builds up in these large air gaps. What this does, this raises the water vapour potential gradient. This essentially means that the concentration of water vapour inside the leaf is higher than outside the leaf. Therefore, down the diffusion gradient, the water vapour will diffuse out of the leaf. This bit here is the stomata in a leaf. This allows gaseous exchange. This allows water vapour to leave the leaf and allows carbon dioxide to enter. But we're going to be talking about water vapour in this video. This here is a guard cell. The stomata is made from two guard cells, shaped like bananas. These guard cells can fill with water. When they fill with water, this closes the gap and stops water being lost from the plant. Back to this diagram again now. You have your palisade mesophile cells and your spongy mesophile cells. Here you have some upper epidermis and some lower epidermis and some stomata. Using this diagram, you can now see how water leaves from the xylem to actually leave the leaf. Just quickly, I'm going to talk about what a transpiration stream is. At the aerial parts of the plant, such as the leaves, water is lost, but obviously this water must be replaced. This water can come from the lower parts of the plant. As there is low hydrostatic pressure at the top of the plant, water can now move from the bottom up the xylem to get there. Once again, in a brief subtopic, how is water movement useful to the plant? The water is needed in the process of photosynthesis. Water is needed to enable cells to become turgid. Water acts as a solvent. This is great for transporting minerals around the plant. Water is needed for growth and metabolic processes. How is water movement measured? Using a potometer or potometer or potometer, whatever instrument you'd like to name it. So essentially, it's a leafy shoot attached to a synthetic xylem, one made of glass that allows capillary action. When water is lost from the aerial parts of this plant, air bubbles and more water will be taken up from below because here we have lots of water available. The rate is measured using a scale or a ruler. 